yard down the field, and that ball is going to the bounds at the 23-yard line. I believe it was touched, and uh, Chris Rockets, who was trying to field the ball, touched it. It went out of bounds, and it'll be Oklahoma State's ball at the Cowboy 23-yard line. If you want to go back and look at the uh, first half statistically, the Cowboys 227 yards total offense, the Bears 219. Maybe the surprise in the statistical uh, uh, lineup there falls the fact that Oklahoma State has more passing yardage. They didn't think that they could pass. I said at the beginning of the show, Merle, they're going to show you some offense because the offset when everybody's talking about the defense has done that. And you're looking at Ike Jackson now at quarterback for Oklahoma State throwing him first down. Intended for Malcolm Lewis incomplete. Robert Waters, number 44, had the coverage on the play for the Baylor Bears. Baylor has been somewhat of a Cinderella team this year. Opened the year with a shocking uh, win over Brigham Young, 40 to 36. Then followed by beating Texas uh, of El Paso. Then lost to Texas Tech, beat Houston. Then came a loss to Southern Methodist to tie to Texas A&M. They won over TCU, Tulane, Arkansas, and Rice. And lost to Texas in the squeaker. It is second down 10 for Oklahoma State. Cowboys go to the left. Sean Jones trying to get to the outside, being boxed in. Makes his cut for about three to four yards, maybe five yards. Johnny Subia up to make the tackle along with Urban Randall, number 49. And if they could just put this guy on the field, he would really improve any defense, wouldn't he? All right, Sean Jones. I, I said when Anderson goes out, they don't lose much in it. But you take a look at this break by Sean Jones to the outside. Now, Everett 27 is going to come up and close it back to the inside. Gets a little help from his friends. It's a good play by the defense. Hell of about a four-yard gain. So the Cowboys now with a third down and six coming up. Split to the right, Jamie Harris Lewis out to the left side. And Jackson throws, it is incomplete. It looked like John Presley, the tight end, was, uh, would have been the receiver because Lewis was running the deep pattern and had his back to the football. Well, Chesley ran a short out to the outside, and the deep end went down, straight down. And the ball was thrown in what you call a nowhere zone. And now Baylor sends Gerald McNeil, number 13, back for the punt from John Conway, who had one boot in the first half for better than 50 yards. Fourth down for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Short line drive kick. McNeil finally picks it up and runs the football out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Chased out by Harry Roberts. 48 yard kick and a three yard return. You know what they say in Muskogee? I bet everybody in Muskogee, Oklahoma, watching tonight expected Harry Roberts to be over there to chase the guy out of bounds. Where the football is, Harry Roberts is. Where the excitement is, Harry Roberts is. Now the offensive unit of Oklahoma State uh, getting a little attention. Yeah, they're going to get Ike Jackson. First of all, what he has to do is a quarterback. The first pass he threw that was Waters almost intercepted 44. was not telegraphed his pass pattern. And go to Anderson, the, half, the halfback, and pick up some yardage that way. Now we're going to go Baylor. They have to score. Okay, double wide out to the left side of the slot. And Cody Carlson throws back the other way. Almost picked off. Jared, the intended receiver, James Spencer, the linebacker from Garland, Texas, almost made a one-hand interception. Spencer, I tell you, he just does what linebackers want them to do. He got deep enough, the deepest part of that zone, and then watch his hand, watch his jump to the top, and then almost catches the football on the way down. Just a great play by Spencer. Spencer is 6'4", 248, 2 pounds, an all-D selection. Bobby Joe Conrad is now in the ball game for the wide out. Cody Carlson coming back to the near side and throwing to Bobby Joe Conrad. And a flag is dropped in the play. Bobby Joe Conrad, does that ring a bell? It should. His daddy played in the NFL for quite a long time. Not a bad football player. Oh, you played against him? A couple of years. Did you? Yeah, when he was on the way out, you were on the way in. <laughs> we have 13.51 to go in the third quarter. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State leading 24 to 7. And we've got a holding call against Baylor declined. Oklahoma State will take the down. Cody Carlson, number 14, a freshman from San Antonio, running this series. As you know, the quarterbacks of Baylor alternate. You might think that the, the difference in the cadence of the quarterbacks would create some problems. They might have, except Grant Tapp made a tape recording of each quarterback, and then they compared them, and they got all three quarterbacks to work the same game. That way, everybody got.
got the signal on time. Third down, 10. Carlson, time over the middle, and it is incomplete. Bruce Davis was there, and Davis looked like he had an open slot. But Carlson's throw was low and a little bit away from Bruce. Malcolm Lewis coming in to take the punt for Oklahoma State. Buzzy Sawyer will be back to put it away for the Baylor Bears on fourth down. Oklahoma State could wind up with pretty good field position here. Malcolm Lewis at his 39. Lewis gets back to the 45, where he's trying to get six yards. He is covered quickly by Derek Turner, number 81 for the Baylor Bears, and his first down for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. We have 13 minutes and 35 seconds left to go in the third quarter, and the score here at the Astro, the Cowboys 24. And I have Jackson, the quarterback, and hand it off to Ernest Anderson, who goes blasting his way through the middle of the midfield. Alan Jameson and Kevin Hancock, the linebackers, the inside linebackers, make the stop after a five-yard pickup. Ernest Anderson, you talk about a guy with quickness and power, watch it. Now, this is what you call a quick hitter. Take a look at the hole that they, the blocking. That's I go number 61. He just gets a tremendous block up the middle. The blocking is there, and Anderson is in the hole. So it is a second down and a long five. Ernest Anderson comes out. John Jones comes in. And then Baker and Robert Waters come on to stop this running play with Sean Jones, a gain of four. And it'll be third down short. Third down about a yard and a half for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, who opened the scoring in the first quarter with Hilger throwing to Malcolm Lewis for 12 yards and a touchdown. And it was 6 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. OSU as the extra point try. Uh, Ernest Anderson then scored on a one-yard point to make it 14 to nothing. Oklahoma State went up 21 to nothing on a Jamie Harris 26-yard touchdown catch. Before Gerald McNeil put Baylor on the scoreboard right before the end of the first half. Third down and short. Jackson lays it up there. And a beauty. Jamie Harris, number 83. A beautiful throw and a beautiful catch on a 25, 29-yard game. When you see a catch like this, now this is Ike Jackson's throw. When you see a catch like this by Jamie Harris, this is individual effort. Look at the concentration, the stretch that he has to make. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Mike Jackson's throw. The ball had to be stretched out. But just take a look what Jamie Harris does with his catch. This is phenomenal. Right there, good hands, concentration, and holds on to the football. Jamie Harris started his collegiate career at Texas Tech, transferred to Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys have been happy about that ever since. First down inside the 20th Baylor. And we've got a flag drop. Delay of the game against Oklahoma State. After Gerald McNeil scored with a minute 21 left to go in the first half to put Baylor on the scoreboard and make it 21-7 Oklahoma State, the Cowboys came back with 16 seconds left in the first half and got a 44-yard field goal out of Larry Roche to lead 24-7, and that's the way it is right here. Jamie Harris having a great night for the Cowboys. Terry Weaver in and for a moment, and Harris now right back on the field. Well, here come the Cowboys with a first down at the 23-yard line. Harris, three catches, 69 yards. Mike Jackson, the junior from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Ernest Anderson running out of real estate and decked at the 20-yard line by Thomas Everett, the freshman from Dangerfield, Texas. He has been a starter so this year. Baylor has had so many injuries. Knees, they've had uh, leg injuries, they've had muscle spasms and everything you can have to interrupt any kind of a regular lineup. Well, Coach Jaff told us today, he said, if we had all of our people healthy for this game, uh, just on defense alone, we would have 22 starters. <laughs> That's how many people they've lost. Terry Weaver is split to the left, Malcolm Lewis to the right for OSU. Jackson throwing to the run, completes it to his tight end, John Chesley at the 10-yard line, just outside the 10. Johnny Subia. Out of Odessa, Texas, makes the hit for the Bears. Well, the linebackers aren't getting deep enough. Jamison, number 47. You see him on the right of your picture. He's playing the run by the quarterback. Does not get deep enough. Chesley is there. And as soon as he comes up and makes the tackle. But the linebackers, when they read that, they're caught in the middle. They don't know whether they're going to have to play the rollout run or to stay back for the pass. Weaver to the left. Lewis to the right. Third down two. Six-yard pickup, and you're seeing the old Ernest Anderson 
the guy who gained 1,800 yards to lead the nation in rushing last year, really operating today. Ernest Anderson should have been down right at the line of scrimmage, but that doesn't happen. He just keeps his balance right there. Randall saves the touchdown. Just take a look at Randall coming in. He saves the touchdown, but that young man can really move it. First down goal to go for the Cowboys, and Oklahoma State is taking a timeout. Ernest is in along with John Chesley for Oklahoma State. Ernest Anderson. Anderson pulled down at the nine-yard line by Thomas Everett, number 27, the freshman right cornerback, who's only 5'8", throws him for a four-yard loss. And when you bring Anderson down for a loss, you got to really hang on for your life. But watch what Thomas Everett does. He forces Anderson to go back to the outside, takes him around the legs, and not try to hit him high so he can bring him down. Now, Everett has got caught to the inside many times so far in this game, but look what he did. He stretched it out, made him break out to the outside, and made the tackle for the loss. Anderson again, and the Baylor defense reacts. Throwing him for the loss. Arden Grant, Aaron Grant, take it for 43. Kevin Hancock, the linebacker. Grant, the rover, throwing him for a three-yard loss. And now the Baylor defense starts to really turn it on. And I bet you a lot of Baylor grads out there right now are thinking that good old Baylor line. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing Baylor better watch for right now is the rollout passing situation. Oh, this crowd here tonight, well over 50,000, complete sellout. Now it is third down and goal. Jackson looking. Jackson finally gets it airborne. Justin Davis, number 26, had the coverage for Baylor. This is offensive pass interference on Barry Hanna on Thomas Everett. Now, we can see it right near the end of this thing. Jackson throws the ball, but Hanna's got his hand right on his back and pushes him off with the right hand right there, and the official didn't call it. This should have been offensive pass interference. Larry Roach will go for his second field goal attempt. He had a 44 yarder earlier. Now they got the offense has got the command to be patient and move the ball again. Take the short stuff. Use Anderson. It's all there. Maybe that, that defense probably went over there and said, okay, you guys, we got you the ball. Now do something with it. <laughs> they say that. Easy for you to say, huh, defense? Yes, right. Tom Mickey, number 10, will be the quarterback in this series. Alan Rice, number three, the fullback. Alfred Anderson, number two, the tailback for the Baylor Bears. First down, Bears trail 24-7, 8-47 to go in the third quarter. This is Alfred Anderson. Not much there. Harry Roberts, number six. James Ham, number 40. Nailing after a two-yard pickup. I'm amazed at Harry Roberts, number six. Uh, the all-purpose every football player for Oklahoma State. He, he just said, give me a uniform. I don't care where I play. Halfback, fullback, quarterback, safety, defensive end. Well, I've got him listed as a defensive end at 6'2", 206, so you know he's an outside linebacker. Roderick Anderson, early eye now for Baylor. McKee gets it away to the inside. Open man, and he's got Bruce Davis. And Bruce Davis rustled out of bounds at the 49-yard line, and the flag goes down. Roderick Fisher and Adam Hines bring him down after an 18-yard pickup. I've seen so much with these receivers tonight, and I'm talking about heady receivers. And I think he gets the ball out here to Davis, but Davis has presence of mind to not only catch the football, but stay in bounds and try to get more. Take a look at this. Now he's going to take a little shot and try to come back in. Very heady football players. Eight minutes, two seconds to go in the third quarter. Oklahoma State's Cowboys ahead 24-7 in this 25th annual Blue Bonnet Bowl Classic. The silver anniversary game of the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. And a Baylor Bear may be out for the rest of the evening. This, this, this penalty is called on the fullback, uh, Broderick Sargent, number 30, who came in late and blocked from, the, from behind. Right at the end of the play, Sergeant number 30 for Baylor came in to try to help out Davis and clip from behind. So that 
brings it back to second down. It'll be second down coming on for the Bears and about four yards to go for the first down. Tom Mickey running this series coming into this game, 52% of his passes, 838 yards. Eight touchdowns, four interceptions. As a slot right. Anderson on the run. Anderson just puts his head down to get that first down to the 40. He already had it, but he wanted more at the 41. Meeting Rod Brown head on. The junior from Gainesville, Texas, a strong safety. He got six yards on the block. And we've got a fullback behind it, right in front of him. Connor, look at the block number 29 gets. Connor 90 on Monger. And just Anderson just breaks it back to the outside, picks up the first down. That's outstanding. First down. Coming to the left side wide, Gerald McNeil. Bruce Davis in the slot left. Back. And he gets an extra three to four yards. Rob Fisher was meeting him eyeball to eyeball, but he still managed 15 yards, and he wanted the extra three or four that he got. Okay, McNeil makes the catch, but you've got to watch what Fisher does as a defensive back. He doesn't let all those moves do anything to him. Now watch, he's going to get his, hold his ground. He's going to stand there and wait until he gets done dancing. He's going to give you that extra yard or two. He's not going to let you break it. Now he'll go in and make the tackle. That's good defense. First down, John Annix up over the ball for Baylor. The guards are Johnson and Cochran. And Mickey on a push is nailed by James Ham, number 40. He's a end, he's a linebacker, but that time he was coming and he nailed the quarterback for a nine-yard loss. Well, Coach Taft told us that when, when the outside receiver and the quarterback read that blitz on the outside on the short side, it's supposed to be a short hookup pattern by the wide receiver. And you're going to see Ham come right up the middle. Nobody touches him. Mickey goes down. And your, your pal number six, Roberts, is also there. Roderick Sargent is now in at fullback. For the Baylor Bears, Bruce, Rice, uh, Bruce uh, Davis to the right. Gerald McNeil is put to the left side. And another blitz! Send him again. And Roberts right there with uh, Matt Munger for a seven-yard loss. Munger coming up right, right up the middle. Munger comes up the middle, but the perfect timing. You watch Munger gets to the quarterback before he can even turn around. That's number 90, Munger in the backfield. And the halfback, Anderson, never had a chance to block him. Third down, 25. Going the wrong way, guys. Alan Rice comes into the game at fullback now for the Baylor Bears. He'll be in there with Alfred uh, Anderson in the eye. We have six minutes and six seconds to go in the third quarter. Here's a good time for a screen, bro, just, just to get your people outside and your linemen out in front. Tom Mickey on the drop, going for the downs on this one. Davis out there. It is almost intercepted. Rod Brown, number 27, a flag dropped on the play. Rockins, number 37, dropping back also. It's against Baylor, they refuse it. All right, we're going we're to see Davis. Just take a look. He's good, but he is not that good. That's Rockins out there with him. Rockins is playing the ball just perfectly. Watch Rockins. Goes right up. He has as much right to that football as Davis has. Almost makes the interception. I think he might have been better off not getting it. So the penalty is declined, and the Bears will have to kick it away with Buzzy Sawyer. Sawyer, when he kicks the ball, I don't know how he hits the ball because when Sawyer drops the ball, he throws the ball out front. Malcolm Lewis is back deep, and all of a sudden we have a timeout call for the Baylor Bears. Five minutes and 52 seconds left. To... The Blue Bonnet Bowl is a New Year's Eve tradition. Going back deep now for the Oklahoma State Cowboys is uh, Malcolm Lewis caught away by Sawyer. Lewis lets it roll, and it comes down inside the 15 and about the 13-yard line. You know, bro, I, I watched Buzz Sawyer hunt the ball, and I did it for a long time, but I guarantee I kind of wonder how he gets the ball away. Watch what he does. He throws the ball out instead of dropping the ball flat. See the nose of the ball go down? There's no way you can get height on the ball. You've got to drop the ball flat or just a little bit tilted with the nose up. <laughs> Is that your golf swing bad? Uh, kind of bad. Yeah, yeah. Kind of bad. Look like it. Not as bad as Bill Swings are, director producer. <laughs> Here we go. OSU's ball. 
first down inside the 15. Jackson gone deep. And Harris out there. We can almost have an offensive pass interference call on Harris. Leston Davis had the coverage on the play. You're absolutely right, Roy. You could have had uh, pass interference offensively because the defensive man, who was Davis at that point, I think, he has as much right for the ball when the ball's in the air. And that time, Harris ran up his back. So the clock is stopped in his second and 10 inside the 15-yard line. 5.43 to go in the third quarter. Cowboys lead 24-7. The Oklahoma State defense has held Baylor's offense only 25 uh, yards in this half. Don't forget about Chesley, number 88. Second down. Jackson. Anderson to Waters, who hit him after a two-yard pickup. Let's go to Dwayne Dow. Yeah, a pretty happy group, the Oklahoma State Cowboys cheerleaders. What's your name? side on a third down Colin Jackson going airborne again or at least hopes to incomplete underthrown and so it'll be a fourth down and ten fourth down eleven to be exact Baylor's doing it defensively now they got to do it offensively it's your anniversary isn't it uh, yeah how many years oh about uh, 15 or 20 or 25 <laughs> stop counting I, uh, <laughs> Oh, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. This is 59th wedding, wedding anniversary. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> On fourth down, <laughs> Gerald McNeil is back here. Well, I picked a good time, New Year's Eve. I have my own New Year's Eve tradition. McNeil fielding the ball, sliding down with it at the 46 yard line, so Baylor gets good field position after a. The defense now is hanging on for him. Cody Carlson is now the quarterback. And you saw Davis split to one side, McNeil to the other. To the run, and it's Alfred Anderson going nowhere. Met by James Ham, number 40, the Eagle in, and James Spencer, the Eagle linebacker, number 85. They weren't sure that uh, Spencer, who's one of the co-captains, is going to be able to play tonight. That's James Ham, by the way. Uh, Ham can carry the ball. You know, he intercepted a pass this year with 69 yards for a touchdown. That's when I didn't move the offense. Those, uh, line, those, those linebackers are always good ball carriers. Yes, that's right. You almost scored one, didn't you? Great hands. Got it, great hands. Well, they, they, probably in high school, they were they were wide receivers or, or uh, tight ends. Throw the ball short outside, please. Second down, eight. Sargent is now the full back in the eye. That's Cody Carlson at quarterback for Baylor. Carlson, incomplete. Intended for Bruce Davis on the sideline. Chris Rockins, the left corner, had the coverage on the play. He did an excellent job. Yeah, but you've got to take a look at the coverage now. Just, just watch. That's Rockins on the outside, and he hits Davis and pushes him down the sidelines. Now, Davis went out of bounds. Isn't that great? That, that's, that's what I like, that bump and run. That's something I like to see back in the National Football League. Yeah, that old AFL days. Here are these guys. Days, particularly since I'm not playing anymore. I like to see it. That's right. Third down. Baylor's passing in the third quarter. One for six. Fifteen yards. Oh, that's offensive motion. The quarterback, Carlson, pulled out. That's amazing when the quarterback forgets the count. Watch Carlson. He's going to pull out. Everybody else has the count except the quarterback. And John Washington did the right thing. He came firing, he came firing across there immediately. This is offense. No question about it. No, you're in trouble, trouble when the quarterback, quarterback forgets the count. He's the guy that's got to know. By the way, uh, our congratulations, congratulations to the Greater Houston Bowl Association for a tremendous job. Illegal uh, motion there by Baylor. A tremendous job by the Houston uh, Bowl Association in staging this 25th anniversary Blue Bonnet Bowl game this year. Bruce Conway, the president's mother, is watching out in California. And our congratulations to Bruce, to Executive Director Ted Nance, to Vice President J. Fred Duncan, who handles all of the facilities, the press facilities, Jack Music, Secretary, met his uh, son John David uh, yesterday, also past presidents, Ray Driver, Vince Buckley, Tech Star, what a wonderful group. Third down, 14. Carlson gets it away as he gets hit. He's got Davis out there, and he, met, he does not get a flag. He was tripped up. Right at about the goal line, and he jumped up, thinking 
thinking that he was going to see a flag against Watkins or Hines, and he didn't. Unintentional contact. Take a look at here. Carlson gets to the outside, and Bruce Davis is going for the, for the post. And he sees him. Carlson unloads a bomb. This is a beautiful pass. And what happens is Davis is stepped on right there. He goes down, and there's no call. Incidental contact. Is that what they call that? Incidental contact. No harm, no foul. Except the receiver went down. That's right. I'll tell you, it would have been a touchdown because Davis was there. He's got the speed to get to the ball if he caught it. Unintentional would be the word. Accidental. I didn't mean it. All right. Baylor bringing on an offensive unit in a hurry. They're trying to get something going here. They get the punting unit on. Let's see what they do with it. And it indeed is kicked away by Buzzy Sawyer. Malcolm Lewis back deep going for the fair catch up from the state. And the ball is going to be down. The ball is going to be down around the five-yard line for the Baylor Bears. Randy Brock was downfield. The second up, Hilger out of the ball game with an injury right before the first half ended. But Jackson has done a fine job. He goes to Anderson. Anderson finds a little bit of daylight and gets out across the 10 to the 12 for a six-yard pickup. And Anderson, you talk about a guy running low to the turf. He was doing exactly that. You know, this is, this is a tough part of an offense. First of all, they know even though Ike Jackson threw the one long ball to Jamie Harris, but they know they're down there. They know they're down there in their own territory, and they know that they don't want Jackson to throw the football, and they know they're going to run, and you can still blow them out of there and pick up six yards. The offensive line is doing the job. Rusty Hilger, the quarterback on the sideline, out of the game. Jackson with a pitch. Anderson. Anderson gets out to the 15-yard line, close to a first down. They have it. Preston Davis, 26, the left quarterback, getting him down after a four-yard pickup, and Anderson is out carried 13 times for 85 yards. Let's go down to Dwayne Dow. Burrow, here he is, one of the top mascots in America. Pistol Pete, the Oklahoma State mascot. Give me a routine, Pistol. Very good. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, man. Right between the eyes. Well, Dwayne, you better go back to your first uh, interview of the evening, uh, Miss Texas. Did you ever notice Dwayne when he went interviews to the Bear? And Pistol Pete, when he pull out guns and things, he got bears. There he got a first down, Oklahoma State. How he kind of gets out of the way and ducks a little bit. Yeah. Well, he kind of disappoints me, really. You want to hang in there. I'd, I'd like to see him wrestle that bear, the real one. First down for Oklahoma State. The Cowboys with a 24 to 7 lead, 238 to go in the third quarter. Number 18, a junior from Baytown, Texas, now in the defensive secondary for Baylor. Jackson flag goes down as he hands off to Anderson, and Anderson gets belted behind the line of scrimmage by Robert Waters, the outside linebacker. Let's see what the flag's about, though. Offense, the defensive line offside. They never got back. He's going to put a stretch shirt on you. You're right there. Too much move. Too anxious. You know, to make they're feeling that Oklahoma State is going to try to do nothing but run the ball. 219 left in the third quarter, 24 to 7. Uh, you can't try to anticipate the, the count. So it is offside. I think Pat Corriott, the junior from Baytown, Texas, the uh, Iron Man, he, uh, that guy has just played with injuries. He's played when almost the entire ball game when other people have been hurt. Jamie Harrison, and Terry Weimer are the wideouts now. And Anderson hits the left side behind Kevin Igo, and Pat Corriott is there to stop him. It'll be third down and about three coming up after a two-yard pickup. I want to see how linebackers are supposed to fill. Watch, watch Kevin Hancock, number 50. Corriott's also going to be there. Watch 50. Reads the play. Now it's time to fill. He's going to just move in. Bang. Makes the tackle. Corriott's right there with him. Complete play. I believe I said third down, second down. That was, uh, that was the same shot we had on one of the highlights. Yep. Second down call coming up for Ike Jackson. And the junior from Portsmouth, Arkansas, giving up to Anderson. Anderson breaking tackles for the first down to the 30. Kevin Hancock again there on the tackle. Hancock told us the day before yesterday he was aware of the fact that he was going to be a very busy man tonight because Baylor is just simply out of linebacker. And he said, hey, we're just going to have to suck it up and do it. You know the amazing thing, and you can tell that the hitting is just fierce in this football game. We haven't had a, the only person that fumbled a football 
it was Bruce Davis, I believe, on that pass reception. And these, these halfbacks and fullbacks have been hanging on the football. And that's just, that's just tough play. Anderson, 14 carries, 93 yards. Let's see what he can do on this one. He gets out near the 40-yard line, shooting up to about the 39. He sure travels in a hurry for eight on that one. Well, he's, he's, he's got, got Blair and, and, and the rest of the offensive line out front of him. And just, just take a look at how fast Anderson hits that hole. He's so, so quick, and he cuts back right in. He gets himself square up the field in a football position. It is second down three with 39 seconds to go in the third quarter. Again, Anderson on the call. This time hit at the line of scrimmage, but falls forward to the 40. Aaron Grant, the rover, and Irvin Randall, the defensive left end, make the hit, and it is short of a first down by a yard and a half, third down one. Let's go down to Dwayne Dow. Well, Merle, somehow I found two people who live in the state of Texas, but who are rooting for Oklahoma State. How can that be? Well, we used to live in Oklahoma, but we moved to Texas, and we got three kids at OSU. So we're OSU fans. Join the game? You bet. be happy. We're going into the fourth quarter at the end of three here in the Astrodome. It's the Cowboys 24, Baylor 7. Leading by a score of 24 to 7, Oklahoma State's ball. Third down and one as we start the fourth quarter. And Sean Jones, who has replaced Anderson, goes diving over the top where he is stopped by Grant. I don't think he got anything. Well, we got a guy, Eric Grant. The Baylor, watch this young man. They say he is a great football player. So over. Look what he does. You talk about sacrificing your body. Look at his head. He gets kicked right in the face. He's the man that makes the play. And it is a punting situation. Conway will kick it away to the number 13, Gerald McNeil. Conway hangs it way up in the air. Bearcat just called for him by McNeil, and he takes the ball to the 26-yard line. So the Baylor Bears have got to get it going here in the fourth quarter. A kick of 30. Tom Mickey is going to be the quarterback in this series for the Baylor Bears. Barrett in motion to tie it in. They go to the run. And Alfred Anderson is brought down at the 30-yard line after a gain of four. It'll be second down six. James Spencer, the linebacker, number 85, on the hit for Oklahoma State. They weren't sure he was going to be able to play tonight, or at least not very much. He has done an outstanding job. There he is. Number 85, James Spencer. The guys you always worry about the ones are supposed to play. And when they do play, you better be careful because they're mad going in and they're playing hurt and they want to hurt somebody else. Alfred Anderson of Baylor, 19 carries, 97 yards. Ernest Anderson of Oklahoma State, 16 carries, 104 yards. This is Alfred Anderson. And Oklahoma State's defense reacts after a gain of a yard. Leslie O'Neill and Rodney Harding, the tackles, are all over him. Remember the guy you just talked about, James Spencer? Well, watch where number 85 ends up. There's a hit there. Watch coming into your picture. He's, He's in there pushing push people. <laughs> He's talking into the, the end, end of this thing. He will only get a piece of it. I had to fight my way all the way across the field. I want a piece of something. Third down, four. Mickey throwing for the first down. Gets it to McNeil for the first down. He's out of bounds on the 45. Roderick Fisher, the right quarterback from Dallas, had the coverage, a 13-yard pickup, and a first down as McNeil has had a fine night for the Baylor Bears. Well... I know, I know I said this in the first quarter, and I said it again in the second quarter, and I'm going to say it one more time here in the fourth quarter with 12.57 to go. That pass play is open all night long. That little six to seven yard hitch, because both corners are playing so far back, Fisher and Rockins, and all you have to do is throw a little hitch. The hitch is there again, top side, same place, short side. McKee to throw. McNeil, and it is intercepted. Off the hands of McNeil, Hines grabs the ball. Neil was there, he hit the ball off his hands, but all he had to do was just throw the short pass, we'll go to the long one, and watch Hines. 
Deep Deep the tip, tip drill. drill. You ever hear him talk about the tip drill? drill? Here it comes. Watch, Watch Hines. Total, total concentration. concentration. Gets the football. The Good defensive, defensive back. back. The, the eighth, eighth interception of the year for this all Big A selection. Again, take a look at it. Look at McNeil. Now they're still far back. They're dropping. That's Fisher all the way back there with him, number one. Hines takes the interception. And a 24-7 Oklahoma State lead over the Baylor Bears. First down, Oklahoma State on the Cowboy 25 as they go to the run. Anderson breaking to the outside. Ernest Anderson having a big night. Going down to the 42-yard line. Byron Lewis, the junior from Baytown, Texas. The free safety yanks him down after a 17-yard pickup. You know, the, you know the guy that makes this thing work is the fullback. It's Kelly Cook. Now, Kelly Cook and Price run back there. They never get the football. All they do is block, and it's worth it sometimes. Take a look at this block, and he gets on the outside on Grant. Now, watch what happens to Grant. There's Cook, a little bit of holding, but he puts Grant on his back, and here comes Anderson to the outside. Now, that's, that's good football. When you don't touch it all night long, all you do is block. It gets boring. Anderson now 121 yards, and the pass completed to the near side to Malcolm Lewis. Thomas Everett and the coverage, a seven-yard pickup. Mike Jackson is doing an excellent job of quarterbacking with the starter, Rusty uh, Hilcher, going out with the injury just before the first half ended. Excellent job. Are you kidding? Oh, boy. You know, to say happy new year to your wife, I know it's your anniversary, but you haven't been able to talk to her all day, have you? She's not celebrating without you. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid that's what's happening. Happy anniversary, happy year. <laughs> Second down coming up, three yards to go for Oklahoma State. Anderson, you can't hardly find him, he runs so low. He picks up the first down to the 45 of Baylor. Kevin Hancock finds him after a six-yard pickup, and it's another first down for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. And they have now registered 18 first downs to 13 for Baylor. The Cowboys, 345 yards total offense for the Bears, 266. As Anderson comes to the sideline, and Kenny Zachary, number two, a sophomore from Sepulveda, Oklahoma, who happens to be the fastest man on the Cowboy ball club, is now in as a tailback. So Jackson throws the ball, incomplete. Jamie Harris leaping high to pull it down, couldn't get it. Robert Waters had the coverage on the play. Our thanks to Jeff Sims, the player who has spotted uh, the Bears for us this evening, doing an outstanding job. Brett McMurphy and Doug Norwood handling statistics and spotting for Oklahoma State. Thank you, gentlemen. You've been super. Mike Jackson, three out of eight, 45 yards. But more important, I think, is the fact that he came in with a lead, and he has protected that lead. He has done a good job in running the offense, mixing the plays well with the plays being called for him, but mechanically he has done well. Yes, he has. First down of the 46, or second down of the 46. Ernest Anderson back in. Anderson running behind Paul Barron, not Partita. Gets five yards before he is brought down. Irvin Randall, number 49 from Hearn, Texas, makes the stop. He's one of the best ever to play at Baylor. He comes out of the ball game now. Derek Turner, number 81, comes in. You know, we're all people say when you see a guy like Ernest Anderson who had a, a year with injuries, you know, uh, they look at him in a draft and maybe they're not going to take him as high. When they see him play in a game like this, as well as he can play, you can bet you that they're going to take a hard look at this young man and he will play someplace. Third down, seven, Jackson throwing back up the screen. No! And Lewis is yanked down hard at the 40-yard line by Steve Drumline, number 77, the freshman from Irving, Texas, after a yard picked up. Baylor did a good job defending that. Boy, they sure did this. This was a screen that Malcolm Lewis scored a touchdown on. But you take a look at, at number 77, Brumbine. He's the guy, and there's blocking on the outside. There's a clip right there on Grant. They didn't call that, but what, watch Brumbine come in. That's a defensive lineman coming all the way across the field getting a wide receiver. Going back deep. Once again, as number 13, Gerald McNeil is Conway, pops in, and McNeil calls for the fair catch, and the ball is down to Oklahoma State on the five-yard line of the Baylor Bears. A 54-yard kick by Conway, and David Webb was down to cover it. We have 10 minutes and 23 seconds left to go in this ball game. Here at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, see a big, big play and a big strike immediately. Carlson now the quarterback, and... That's going to be a five-yard pickup by Alan Rice. Harry Roberts on the tackle. Matt uh, Monger also 
up there. The ball is just shy of the ten, marking down all the nine yard line. Let's go to Dwayne Dow. All right, Burr, we have Colin Ackerson with us. He was a kicker, a place kicker for Oklahoma State, a native of Denmark, and an Oklahoma State grad who's in business in Houston. It's going to be a pretty happy night for you. Oh, it's great. We're just having a, a great celebration time here. It's good to be back in, in the hands of the Cowboys again here, and I'm here really enjoying us. How does a fellow get from Denmark to Stillwater, Oklahoma? It's been a long ways, but this uh, game student uh, back in 77, we had a great time, and decided to really have a good time. All right, thank you, Colin Ackerson. Bruce Davis on the reverse for 16. Watch Bruce Davis. He doesn't even wait for his blocker to get out. He just outruns the man coming up to the outside. Watch this move. Forget about the blocker. I don't need you. I can just go blow by this guy by myself. That's flying. We're waiting for everything on the inside or passing the outside. Now watch, here he comes. Breaks right back to the inside. And the man that he beat was Rod Brown, number 27. Davis and McNeil of the White House as Oklahoma State shows the blitz. Carlson delivers to McNeil for a gain of nine. And Roderick Fisher, the right quarterback, had the coverage on the sideline. The ball marked right on the 35-yard line. Joe Barrett. Assist. Joe Barrett, the tight end, was on the sideline. Yeah. Wind knocked out of him. You know, now, let me just say something. 24 to 7, and I've been saying this. I've been saying, all they got to do is keep throwing those little 8 9 yard hitches, and they can walk down the field and do it in about a minute and a half, and they're still back in the ball game. Tonight's attendance here in the Astrodome 50,090. McNeil and Davis are in the slot right. Carlson throws the wall. Oklahoma State is staying grounding, and there's a flag on the play. Matt Munger had him uh, wrapped up, and as Carlson unloaded the ball, the flag was dropped, and immediately the Oklahoma State mentioned grounding. Intentional grounding. It's been a tough night for Baylor. He was trying to say that Anderson was there. Now you're going to see Carlson come out to the outside. The receivers all went straight down the field. Now, he's being tackled right there by Monger, number 90. And he threw the ball, but he's saying that Anderson came into the play and did not. The loss on the play was four yards. And apparently no penalty was called. Third down, Carlson and Rice and Anderson. They've got the power eye in there. Rice, the quarterback, going for the first down. That's the play with that uh, where Rice comes up as a quarterback. I said Carlson was there. It was Rice all the way as the quarterback. On the option, he picks up the first down. Well, they read the defense. If they don't adjust to it to the weak side, then Rice goes down the line of scrimmage. He has the option play because he has a tailback behind him. And he is the fullback, remember? The starting fullback and the third string quarterback. And look at that run. Now you know why they put him down in third down. That's not a bad play. You know? No, sir. Carlson's right back in there now with Sargent at fullback, and Stockmer is the tailback. Carlson under a rush, fires it back over the middle of the crowd, it's intercepted by Spencer, and Spencer is going to be down back around the 46-yard line, but the big guy grabs it off, Davis wrestles it down, and it is a another interception for the Oklahoma State Cowboys, and they have been tough this year in that department. They're looking for a middle screen. It's exactly what they're doing. They're going to dump the ball over the middle. Carlson. And this is the guy you were telling me about that's injured. Spencer. Yeah, I like to know where he's injured because he runs. Now he's starting. Now he thinks he's the halfback. Look at this. He's going to break it back to the outside. I should get four yards. He didn't get it. It's 6 4 2 40 played by Oklahoma State. And the 28th of the year for the Cowboys. They led the nation in pass interceptions this year. Anderson diving it out across the 45 to the 47. Irvin Randall brings him down. Anderson is really having himself a night. He picked up two yards on the play. Ralph Part, uh, Partita and Paul Blair blocking ahead of him on the right side. Those guys have been busy tonight. You know, you've heard this expression so many times, Earl, but the one thing about Anderson that's impressive, both Andersons are watching on either team, is they're north-south runners. Anderson goes forward. If there's nothing there, he's going to pick up a yard just by his power. Jackson overthrowing, although good coverage over there on Jamie Harris by Preston Davis. So he 
threw that one high and probably a good thing. You know, we're talking about the interception. Uh, Oklahoma State's secondary and linebacker core has led uh, the nation this year. But also, when uh, Adam Hines picked off the interception earlier tonight, his eighth, he's chasing a, a legend at Oklahoma State, Bob Fenimore, with 1949, pull down nine. 1945, thank you for it. Then Bob Fenimore went on to play a ball with the Chicago Bears. The draw. Anderson, near midfield. Robert Waters, Kevin Hancock, the linebackers, stopping after three. One of those time-consuming plays. I yep. had a chance to win. I want to wish my family a happy new year because I'd like to this game as well. We may not get out of time to make the call. John Conway into the kicking. Gerald McNeil goes back deep for the return. And Paul McGuire, for his family, really is here in Houston. I know you haven't seen him for a while because he's been sitting in a lot of airports waiting for planes to fly. McNeil on the run. McNeil pulled down on the 26. 32-yard kick and a return of eight. Covered by Stanley Blair. The eternal optimist. There's still time. There's still time if you get a quickie and take the ball away and get another one and then get another one. Well, the thing about college football is that, you know, the clock stops after every first down until they reset the stakes. So you have a lot of time to move the ball. Uh, please throw some of those short outs because they're, they're still there. When, when you have Davis and McDeal, they, they can break it at any time. I think it surprised me is they have not really thrown the ball to Barrett, number 88, to tight end. Mickey is now the quarterback. And Mickey gets sacked. A little play action. And Matt Monger uh, didn't get fooled at all. He just blasted it in there to throw Mickey for a 10 yard loss. Monger's the guy that does it, number 90, the linebacker. Watch it. What he did is he went right to the quarterback. This was supposed to be a fake reverse. You see Mickey pulling the ball back out again? Harder didn't care what, what happened. His job was to get to the quarterback. That's discipline by a defensive linebacker. Watch this. Here's the fake. Marcus says, I don't care what you do with the ball. I'm going after the quarterback. And he got him. And the loss on the play, nine yards, second and 19. Sergeant on fullback, Alfred Anderson, is the tailback. And a wide out to each side for the Miller Bears. Carrying the ball, he gets out across the 25 to the 26 of Leslie O'Neill, number 99, and James Spencer, number 85, pulling down from behind after he picked up nine yards. Mickey got, knew he got hit last time, he said, I'm not going to wait for it this time. Here, watch, the pressure is on, he moves back to the outside, and then he breaks it up field. He figures, the only thing I can do now is run with the football. you got to learn how to get down, son. There's Spencer, Monger. And Kevin I go. Uh, the offensive guard for Oklahoma State getting ready for the next series. One and a half. Third down coming up. McGee under a rush. Fires it over the middle. Has his man, McNeil. McNeil at the 45. And McNeil is thrown down, pulled out down at the 43 by Roderick Fisher. A gain of 31 yards and a first down for Baylor. Oklahoma State's playing what you call a soft defense, and this pass is a beautiful pass. McNeil's running across. He put his hand up. He knew he was open. Now the chase is on. Hines is not going to catch him. Fisher's the only man that really has a shot at him. He said, no matter what happens, I got you. He only weighs 135 pounds, so that was easy to bring him down. But he stayed in there. Mickey stayed in there. Hit McNeil. Now the race is on. Take a look at it. What's Fisher? I guess he's getting beat you, my friend. You're going down. First down, Bobby Joe Conrad is now in as a wide out. Tom Mickey. And it is completed, I believe, at the 28th. Yes, it is, to Bobby Joe Conrad for 15 yards and a first down. The senior from Clifton, Texas, who had caught nine for 162 yards going into the game today. Bobby Joe Conrad, he comes back to the ball. He keeps his eye on the ball and has to cradle it. And he makes sure of the catch. Watch this, goes down to get the football. Total concentration on the ball, picks up the first down. Set a quick score in the back of the ball game. 526 left to go in this one. First down for the Bears. McKay 
throws to the near side, under throws the intended receiver, Bobby Joe Conrad. And the clock is stopped with 5.14 to go in the ball game. And the Cowboys leading 24 to 7. Baylor's quarterbacks have been sacked for 28 yards losses four, uh, four times tonight, 28 yards. Easy for being up here to take a look at it, but I'll tell you right now, if they take Heatherly to tight end, and they roll to his side, and then slip him back under and go to the backside, the pursuit of Oklahoma State is all coming to the strong side of the field, and they try to hit him back going across the middle, he'd be wide open. Sergeant and Anderson on the running back, slot to the right. Alfred Anderson going to throw. He's got a man over in the end zone. And with the end of the end zone, it's a yes touchdown. Gerald McNeil had one foot just barely in the back of the end zone. A 28 yard touchdown reception for Gerald McNeil. His second touchdown catch of the night. And that was from Alfred Anderson. Boy, they set this play up nice. Watch how wide open McNeil is. And he doesn't even slow down. All he wants to do is catch the ball, get that one foot in the end zone. Touchdown. Okay, here it comes. Pitch. Now look at Anderson's running out here just like it's a run play. Slows up. He's got the blockers in front of him. That's sergeant number 30. And watch this, McNeil. Look how far behind the defender he is. Touchdown. Well, well, Anderson, Anderson is a pass thrower. It's two out of two this year. Now, now for the extra point try, it's going to be Marty uh, Jemison. And Marty brings the ball on this one. So with five minutes and seven seconds left to go in the ball game, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State 24 and the Bears 14. But watch this. Here's the touchdown pass. Oh, McNeil was so far. They set this up so well, and it was set up by the running of Anderson. And so that makes the score of the Cowboys of Oklahoma State 24, the Bears of Baylor 14. And we'll be right back after these messages. Over here in the fourth quarter, but they still trail by 10 as Jeff Mueller gets ready to kick off. And Oklahoma State anticipating the onside kick. And that's the pattern, and the ball is recovered by Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys are going to be down at about their own 25-yard line on the return by Chris Rockin. So, no return, yardage. And the Cowboys take over. All right, we, this is worth seeing this touchdown with Anderson because of, of what he does with the ball. Look at it. He even starts upfield. Like, like it is a run. run. Freezes the whole secondary. McNeil is just so far back. And look at his pass. Got to make, make him a quarterback right there on the money. Well, he came as a quarterback out of high school. If he keeps throwing like that, he may uh, join that quarterback for <laughs> They've got three. He could be the fourth one. Sean Jones brought down by Kent Townsend, number 85, at the 29 yard line. A gain of four, second down six. Ernest Anderson. Of Oklahoma State has carried 20 times for 135 yards tonight. Clock taking away. 4.40 to go in the game. Cowboys 24, Bears 14. Now, total yardage changes in the ball game. You can take statistics and throw them out because it's 370 for the Bears, 353 for the Cowboys, but they're winning by 10. Mike Jackson at quarterback. Hilger injured right before the first half. Out of action in the second half, the Cowboys turn it over to Jackson. He turns it over to Sean Jones and picks up two yards. And Alan Jamison, the linebacker, yanks him down, and the clock shows 4-10 and running. And it is third down and four for Oklahoma State. As Malcolm Lewis comes in as a split in. And going out is Terry Weaver, the sophomore from Joplin, Missouri. Hey, if Oklahoma State ever gave the ball to the fullback, they'd fool everybody. <laughs> Chris Crawford is in as the tailback now. Jackson under a rush, still has some food, swings it out into the flat to Crawford, and Crawford is met by lots of tacklers. I believe he's a little bit short of the first down. He picked up four yards. Irvin Randall was rustling him, trying to keep him from getting across the 35-yard line to first down territory. 
and it's a little bit short. Take it. They should take a time out here. The reason I say that because the officials are standing around, everybody's standing around waiting to see, and almost 16 seconds ran off the clock since the time he was down. Two timeouts remaining for each team. We're going to do the punting. Going back deep for the Baylor Bears is Alan Rice. Time away, he gets hit, flag goes down. They're going to get a running the uh, kicker penalty. Rice slips down on the return. 52-yard punt and a three-yard return, but a roughing the kicker penalty is going to come up against the Baylor Bears. And it's, I think it's on Thompson, number 20 of Baylor. But this kick is just sensational. Now, the question is, was the man blocked? Block, the man is being blocked into the kicker. This is not roughing the kicker. I'm sorry, my friend. they got to bring it. They can't. When you're blocked into the kicker, Marker was blocking into the kicker. He blocked Thompson into the kicker. Take a look at it right here. Here comes Thompson. Marker's right there now, and he blocks him into the kicker. There's nothing that Thompson can do. But... The penalty is going to be assessed, and Oklahoma State will keep the football. First down on the 40. I agree with you, Paul. I, you know, the guy is, he's actually helpless. Well, that's the rule. The official just missed it. First down. And carrying the ball, Sean Jones and Kevin Hancock. Hits him behind the line for a yard loss. Second down, 11, 2.46 remaining in the ball game. Oklahoma State leading the Baylor Bears by 24 to 14. Oklahoma State, 7 and 4 for the year, 3 and 4 in the Big 8 Conference. Open the season with a win over North Texas State, then beat Cincinnati, Texas A&M, Tulsa, lost to Nebraska by only four after leading Nebraska early, then Oklahoma by one, uh, beat uh, Kansas 27 to 10, beat Colorado, and then lost to Kansas State by one. By six to Missouri and beat Iowa State. Coming into this. And a loose ball, and who's going to get it? Taylor. Kevin Hancock falls to the ball. Well, it's justice. It's justice because it should have been Baylor's ball anyway, but downfield. But they, it was fine the way things happened. Number 50, Hancock is going to eventually get the ball. Now, the ball never got to Anderson. Everybody's got a shot at it. Jamie, Jamie Harris, Harris had a shot, shot at it, and then you see Hancock number 50 pick it up. So it is Baylor's ball on the 39-yard line. Cody Carlson will be the quarterback for the Bears. They trail by 10 with 2 minutes and 10 seconds left in the ball game. Bruce Davis puts on wide to the left, Gerald McNeil to the right for the Bears. Carlson going to try to get it all, he's got McNeil out there, and he makes the catch and drops the ball to the 5-yard line. He said there was a reception. McNeil thought he had possession long enough. It's an incompleted pass. Rockins had the coverage on the play. He almost, he almost got a penalty for running into the official afterwards. All right, here it comes. Carlson lays the ball out. Had it been longer, it would have been a touchdown. Watch McNeil now. Does he have possession? Caught the ball, and the ball hit the ground. That should have been a completed pass. So it's second down to the 39. We'll be announcing our most valuable players uh, for each team here, and it might be a double Anderson. <laughs> Second down. Carlson gets hit as he unloads, and he completes it to Sargent, the fullback. Sargent gets spun down at the 35-yard line as the clock runs with a minute 52. Left to play, Harry Roberts made the tackle after a three-yard pickup. Roderick Sargent out of Waxahachie, Texas. Sargent was, was trying to run back and pick up a blocker, but once he gets by Spencer right here, what he should do is just turn back up the field. He's got a blocker there, number 88. He runs back into the crowd. And Harry Roberts, number six, makes a super play. McNeil and Davis on the wideouts. And flags go down, whistles blow, the play stops. His addicts, I believe. Uh, made a move, uh, Mark Addix, number 75. You know, they talk about Mark Addix, and you're getting a look at him there. The pro scouts are talking about him being a $2 million football player. Number one draft choice, very high, $2 million. bucks. What if he's got an agent? Ooh. I might, I might, I might take a cram off, of course, just to be his lawyer. Whatever. 
Mark Eddick. They say he's the best. Well, Grant Taft says that he is absolutely the best lineman in the nation. Offensive lineman. We're looking at the Andersons. Alfred has the MVP for Baylor, and Cody Carlson fires away, and it hits an open spot. The deep receiver was Bruce Davis. No chance to get the ball to him in the end zone. Ernest Anderson of uh, Oklahoma State certainly, uh, I think, would be a choice for MVP for Oklahoma State. And he had Alfred Anderson, number two, just coming out of the backfield, down along the side, line of scrimmage, and nobody is, is, is covering him. Try to go for it all. All he needs to do is get the first down first. Tom Mickey is coming in quarterback now for Baylor on this fourth down on the 40-yard line of Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have led since the first quarter when they jumped out in front six to nothing. They put 18 points on the board in the second quarter. Anderson again, right down the sideline. Mickey gets sacked and down he goes. Leslie O'Neill, number 99, the sophomore from Little Rock, Arkansas, sacks him for a six-yard loss, and Oklahoma State takes over. Let's go to Dwayne Dow. Southwest Regional Manager for Norelco, who has the Norelco Most Valuable Player Award, won by Oklahoma State's fine running back, Ernest Anderson. Dwayne, we have Ernest Anderson, 110% healthy. It's not too tough to pick the most valuable player. Our congratulations to him for being the MVP, to the rest of his team, and also the coaching staff for the outstanding job they did putting a game plan together to stop the fine Baylor team. I would like to add one other thing. To everybody out and listening on us. On behalf of more than 50,000 employees of North American Phillips, our parent company, we want to wish everybody out there a healthy and prosperous New Year. Thank you, Bobby Yaksek. Thank you, gentlemen. And so the Oklahoma State Cowboys a minute three seconds away from a blue bonnet bowl, uh, bowl victory, leading the Baylor Bears 24 to 14. So one way or another, and Anderson was going to be the MVP in this game tonight. Certainly, it's Ernest Anderson of Oklahoma State. And at last, that last play I was talking about, on the third down, they had Alfred Anderson going down the sidelines. He was wide open. On that fourth down situation, he was doing the same thing. And it's just, it was unfortunate that the quarterback in the, in the in third down, it was Carlson. On fourth down, it was Mickey. And they were looking downfield for the sprinters, their game breakers. And all they had to do was dump the ball out to number two on the outside. All right, Oklahoma State. Now, Baylor still has two timeouts left. And the Cowboys go with a pair of tight ends, and Ernest Anderson, the tailback, and Cook, the fullback. Ernest Anderson, out across the 45 to the 47. Paul Mergenhagen, number 79, and Steve Grumbine, number 77, the defensive tackles, get him down after a gain of two, and we have 57 seconds left to go in this ball game. And we've got a timeout here at the Blue Bonnet Bowl. It's the Cowboys, 24, the Bears, 14. We'll be right back after these messages. Oklahoma State, what an outstanding job he has done since coming from Pittsburgh University to Stillwater to head the football program. Anderson into Baylor territory at the 46. Jack Hurd brings him down, and, and uh, Ernest Anderson just keeps right on chugging along. Gain of six on that one. 48 seconds left to play in the ball game. Well, Jimmy Johnson was very confident coming into this one, as was Grant Taft. Both felt that their teams were ready, and uh, they were ready. Johnson, uh, Jimmy Johnson, came very close. As you look back over the record, of possibly going even 10-1 and one for the year. And Baylor, starting the season, was picked to finish eighth, was the Cinderella team of the Southwest Conference. Grant Tapp just doing an unbelievable job of coaching with band-aids and lots of wrappings and so forth, keeping a team together and keeping that team on the field. And they've turned uh, in a very exciting year. But, but it's, it's been, been a tough night for the Bears, Bears this evening as the Cowboys, Cowboys have led all the way. I, I agree with you on both the coaching staffs. What a fine job. Staff, he's, he's had so many injuries in this game. game. And, and one, one, one man, Ernest Anderson, Anderson he's going to welcome 84 because 83 is going to be a tiring year for him. <laughs> Ike Jackson has done a fine job here in the second half for the Cowboys. As Hilger, injured in the first half, did not return. Anderson met by Hancock right in the hole. Knocked down. Thomas Everett coming up to help out. 38 seconds left to play in the game. Baylor's record in bowl games now will be 5-6. and six. Oklahoma State 6-2 six and two in bowl action. And they've been in two bowls in the last three years. Well, they can run the clock down to six seconds and then take the penalty and then punt if they want to. They, they won't even go into the huddle. 
Oklahoma State. Ernest Anderson has gained 140 yards, 23 carries. Alfred Anderson of Baylor, 20 carries, 98 yards. Hilger, 12 out of 17, 137 yards and two touchdowns in the first half. Jackson, 3 out of 8, 42 yards here in the second half. And delay of the game will cost Oklahoma State 5 with 7 seconds to go. Uh, Tom Mickey, 8 out of 13, 126 yards. And Cody Carlson, 7 out of 17 for 47 yards in the air for Baylor this evening. Seven seconds to go. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State winning the Silver Anniversary Blue Bonnet Bowl Classic over the Baylor Bears. This probably the last play of the game. Mike Jackson brings the Cowboys to the line of scrimmage on fourth down. And Jackson on a drop under a rush gets hit as he fires away and it's going to be intercepted. It is picked up by Lewis as the gun sounds to end the ball game, but the ball is still alive as long as Lewis is on his feet and in bounds. He is finally out of bounds at around the 25 yard line as the ball game comes to an end and Timmy Johnson. So the final score of this 25th Blue Bonnet Bowl game. Oklahoma State's Cowboys 24, the Baylor Bears 14. We'll be right back after these messages.